Welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. And this week, it's finally here! We're talking about The Incredibles 2! Oh my god, I've waited! Uh, Scott, uh, I hate to say this, but we're not getting The Incredibles 2 until next month. What? We're not getting it for another month, for some reason. Well, fuck it then, we'll just talk about Ruby! Cue the music! Hello there, capers, and as I said, welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. My name's Scott James Meridue, and this is the show where we talk about various geek and nerd-related topics, and are joined each week by a very special different guest. Now, I'm joined by my friend, my cohort, my hetero life mate, it's Mark Russell, ladies and gentlemen! Salutations! And, uh, we would love to talk about The Incredibles too. we'd love to talk about a few movies that are coming out right now except they're not coming out in the fucking uk right now for some reason which i cannot comprehend it's weird we, we seem to be doing quite well in that uh, that regard we were getting uh, films out before america and now selling it the other way around yeah i mean i like a week i can understand two weeks yeah sure three weeks <sighs> you're pushing it but you know what fine a month um a fucking month it's it's, it's two big ones it's the incredibles 2 and what's the other one? Oh, is it ant-man and wasp uh, yeah, I think so. Or just the Jurassic World count? I don't know. That oh, no, yeah, yeah, Jurassic World. Uh, yeah, Jurassic World. That was that was it. Because uh, uh, and uh, frankly, that is out now, and I have seen it. But the reason why we didn't do anything about it is because I mean, it'll be we'll be a bit late to the game, sadly. So uh, you're not going to see anything about Jurassic World. You're not going to see anything from uh, The Incredibles two about from us because because. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Wait, why do they do that? Why do they stagger the release dates this much? This That would seem like a really, like, a no-win scenario. Because you've got a really good film, and you release it in the US, and then everywhere else, like, a month later. Like, yeah, yeah that might build up hype, but a month? After a month, that hype train, people are going to have moved on. And yeah, hmm. you're going to have a lot of people go see the movie when it comes out, but... It's not going to be as much as you might have got if it was a week later. And if it's a bad movie, that's just more time for word to spread. We live in, like, with the internet now. Bad reviews of a movie could spread like wildfire. It could be literally a matter of days after a month. I mean, that, that could easily kill your international box office returns. Hmm. Wait, how long were we waiting for this movie? I was 13 when it came out. I'm 26 now. Oh, well, then I, I would have been the same age, yeah. And I, I fucking loved that movie. Yes, why do we have to wait so long? We got through two goddamn car sequels, two car spin-offs, so they uh, should have, what should have been the end of Toy Story, and only now The Incredibles comes out? Yeah, it, it, they do seem a bit late to the game on that front as well. I mean, better late than never, I guess. And, you know, if the movie's good, it doesn't matter. But we don't know, because we can't fucking see it yet! And it, Why? Mean, and it means we've got to avoid Incredibles 2 related stuff on the internet for a fucking month to avoid spoilers. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can avoid a couple of days for, Aven for Infinity War spoilers, like the plague, but this is, this is a month. And, they're, and Facebook and Twitter are going to make every single damn meme they can, find, they can put out there and give the whole thing away. Yeah, and... Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it just it just seems stupid to me. I don't know. I don't know who makes these decisions. I, I but anyway. So instead of talking about the Incredibles, we're going to talk about something that actually, for once, Mark and I both love. It had <laughs> to happen eventually. Oh my god! Because you you know you and me. We're good friends, but we have lots of different opinions about lots of different things. But Mark, for once, I have to thank you. Because you're the one that introduced me to Ruby. Capers, if you didn't know, Mark, you used to do uh, reviews for Ruby on A Place to Hang Your Cape. Uh, well, I still do, technically. Still do, technically. I mean, you, you do reviews when they, when they come out, obviously. But this was back in the early days. And, um, early days of Ruby, I say. And I, 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 ha I had heard of Ruby. In fact, you know what I'm going to tell you, Mark? I'm going to tell you the origin story of my first interactions with Ruby, because what they did, what Rooster Teeth, the company that made this, uh, they um, released the red, white, uh, yellow, and black 
trailers for each of the main characters. We'll talk a bit more about the characters and stuff like that. Uh, also, just just so you know, spoiler warning. We are going to go into spoilers, but um, uh, so I, I saw like the first two. But you know, I think I saw all of the trailers. Did you see all the trailers when they first came out? Uh, yeah, I think I did. Do you know? I, I might have got into the series like halfway through volume one, and I saw the trailers then. Ah, uh, okay. So you see, what I did was I saw the trailers before anything came out because I was a big fan of Red versus Blue, the machinima that Rooster Teeth also does. And uh, I'll be honest, Mark. I did not care for these trailers. I was like, <gasps> I, I thought the animation was good, but at the same time, like, okay, there's this red riding hood looking person standing over a grave, and oh, now there's giant monsters attacking her. Oh, and that's it. What was the fucking point of that? I don't know anything oh. about this character. What? What is this? A show? Is this just a random thing? Like, what? What's? What? What is this? Oh, apparently there's four characters, and this is the first one. But I don't know anything about these characters or what their goals are. Do they fight monsters? Is that the thing? Well, that's not really like enough. It's like having a trailer for Star Wars where you just see like Luke Skywalker killing stormtroopers. Like. I mean, okay, but you're not really going to know what that thing's about. And that track continued with the uh, the white trailer. Uh, that was even more confusing. Just, oh, she's singing and now she's fighting. Okay, I guess she likes to sing. Great insight into her character. And it got a bit better with the black and yellow trailers where they had, actually had dialogue. And But even then, like, the, the black trailer, it was a um, black character, uh, Blake. Blake, Blake, Blake. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You stop getting the names, I get concerned. No, no, I know, I know the fucking names. I like this thing. I know the fucking names. Yeah, but anyway, and she's she's robbing a train, I guess, and she's fighting on a train, and it's, she's having a disagreement with this other guy who we later turn out to be Adam Taurus, and he's a big character. But I didn't know anything about why they were robbing the train, what they were attacking the train, or what they were doing there, or why she sent me a disagreement with him and left him. And it just left me with so many questions. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a difference between teasing the audience with a trailer and just, like, leaving us with questions that aren't going to be answered for weeks, if not months. It, it, it was very, very frustrating. And honestly, the yellow trailer is the one I like the most. Because she actually... She, basically, uh, Yang, the yellow character, she's going into a nightclub and she's looking for someone. I think she's looking for... Did she say... Um, who, who's she looking for? Like a girl? A mother. A mother. a mother. Oh, she said a mother. And she's interrogating a uh, guy at the nightclub. And, she start, and that leads to a fight. And it was like its own little self-contained story. I had all the information I needed to know about this character. Great insight into a personality. Good animation. Good fight scene. And yeah, it, it was uh, it was great. And I just kind of think like, well, now I would actually kind of like to see more of this character. I just don't care about any of these other fucking characters. Oh, how little I knew. Because <laughs> I, I do like these characters, but this was for my money, not a good introduction to them at all. It was, it was just, it was frustrating and confusing, and it didn't really sell the, uh, sell the show to me. Which meant when it first came out, when the episodes, which meant that when it first came out, when the episodes first started, uh, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it for a long while until Volume Two had come out. Hmm. And that's when I first started seeing your reviews. And if I remember correctly, they were quite positive. Yes, they were. Because um, I was quite the opposite quite the opposite to you, in fact. Um, I first saw uh, posters for Ruby when I was when I was going through TV tropes. Like, oh, that looks interesting. A, a red riding hood with a big scythe. So I went and watched the red trailer and I absolutely fell in love with it. Because like, I haven't seen anything like this before. This is amazing. What is this? So I, don't watch I think white you have trailers, seen stuff trailer, like this before. It's I think you have seen stuff like this before. It's very am, anime influenced. I have, but I I realized that I had part. I, Destiny had brought me to watch this show because I had the creator of the show, the late Monty Um. He made these like uh, six minute short things, which I watched when I was in high school, called which were basically uh, 
Hearts, Final, Fa- uh, Final Fantasy, uh, Sc- uh, Kingdom Hearts, and Square Enix characters all kicking the crap out of each other with amazing fight scenes. I went, I know where I've seen this before. I've seen this in high school. This is the same guy. So that was a major reason why I got involved with the series because the 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 art style and the amazing dance like choreography of the fights got I was amazing. How serendipitous ness What a what a quinky dink. What a quinky dink indeed. And yeah, so because that's the thing, uh, this was Monty Ohm's passion project. This was because Monty Ohm was person who worked at Rooster Teeth. And he did. I didn't know. I wasn't aware of these little videos that you said, but he worked extensively on Red vs. Blue, and I knew yeah. from Red vs. Blue because he directed a lot of the. did a lot of the uh, the fight scenes in Red vs. Blue, which relied less on the machinima traditional animation and more on self rendered um, anime ish original, not anime ish, but f- fight scenes. Like there, if you watch the movie, there are some intense action scenes that are really really cool and funny uh i highly recommend that ed- anyone and everyone should watch the episode where the red and blue teams watch the show it's great uh fight against a newly restored uh agent tex and it's uh it- it- it's a fight scene it's it's really cool and slick and stylish it's got a lot more production value that a lot of Hollywood action scenes, and granted, it's animation. You can do a lot more of animation than you can do with live action people. But then again, it's a lot better than a lot of uh, animated action scenes. And <laughs> he, he really, really knew his stuff. And so I thought, okay, you know what? Well, I didn't have a good experience with the trailers, but I will check it out. I will give it an, a chance. And it knocked my Socks off. I would, love, I would like to see actually someone have the socks blasted off by Sheryl Olsen. That'd be amazing to see. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> that's what it felt like. Because <laughs> the, the opening episode with the uh, music and the action and the characters and the funny bits and the dialogue, it just like it grabs you. And yeah, you ha- has questions, but a lot of those questions get answered, and you learn about the world a bit more uh naturally and a bit more dynamically and it was just it was a much better much better introduction to this world and this new lore and it it had me hooked and i've been a fan ever since me too yeah but i think we should now this is now we should talk about the actual world what is ruby about well whenever i talk about it i always say that it's a an, an online web series, an animated web series about these four girls that go to basically Hogwarts for fighting monsters. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, we agree. Yeah, and I mean, granted, the series does uh, diverge from that initial premise and goes into much, much, much different territory, but it's. Uh, it, that's the initial starting point and obviously you would start at season one volume one and that's all you really need to know to get started with but like i said we'll be talking about spoilers so we'll do a bit talk about it a bit in a bit more detail let's talk about our four main characters the main character for which the series is named after even though it's spelt r-w-b-y is ruby rose mark yeah. what's ruby rose like She's a high, she's a high-pitched voice, cookie-eating badass from hell. Yeah, she is the. She's both like the cutest, deadliest fighter ever because she's like, yay, sunshine, rainbows, and puppies, and murder. And it's, it's because she's got basically these girls are all training as warriors. They all have their own individual weapons. They all fight other people and these giant fucking monsters and grim the grim will get to them and uh they each have individualized weapons as we say and ruby's main re- weapon is a uh, crescent rose which is a giant red scythe that can transform into a sniper rifle and call it that i'm gonna say it again a giant scythe that transforms into a sniper rifle. So totally awesome, dude. Yeah, it it it. I, we're, that's scra- that's just scratching the surface. We've only just begun, guys. Like, 
Like, oh my so god. So much awesomeness. It, that is so awesome. And the way she uses it is so awesome because the animation style means that it's really, really good. And I, she's really cool. And, and what I like about this, it's very... um. The series is very anime inspired. It's not anime because it was not made in Japan. Rah! But it, uh, it's it's also influenced by uh, other laws and legends mm. and uh, on case fairy tales. And obviously, the I've made a red riding joke before, but that was very similar to what a character's design is influenced by. If you look at the character, you say, "Oh, that looks a bit like." Red Riding Hood, but kick ass! Yeah. You know, it's Ruby's ever flowing cape. Ruby's ever flowing cape, which works really well when she's zooming about the place because a lot of these characters also have individual powers, like. Se- semblances. Semblances, which I like, but at the same time, I don't think it's very necessary. They play a bit more of a role later on in the series, but initially, it's just like. Oh, in addition to uh, being super badass fighters with individualized uh, fighting styles and weapons, they also have superpowers. Okay, why do they have superpowers? They just do. They they just yeah. do. Okay. It, 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 it kind of reminds me of um, an early version of The Incredibles where everyone apart from uh, Bob could fly <laughs> and he was had to chase after them in a station wagon and he was the Jean of the original idea. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's just one of those things we don't really question it. I guess. I mean, honestly, I would not miss its absence. But at the same time, it can lead to some pretty cool things because Ruby's semblance is super speed. Like she is, she is, she's a nippy little bugger. Yeah, well, it's interesting how she can kind of like combine her powers with her cape, and she comes this flying red crimson death ray. But basically, yeah, and it, she uses it to. Uh, a great advantage. But we'll talk more about her later. We're going to move on to the white character. That was the red character. We'll talk about the white character. Because the name of the show is Ruby. But it's stylized as R-W-B-Y. Which are the names of the characters. So the white character is Weiss. Weiss Schnee. Yay! Who is your typical... Uh, spoil- ice queen. Spoiled ice queen. Stuck up princess character uh heavily influenced by i think snow white would probably be the be- the closest uh, example that's, that's, that's right her, her name is literally german for white snow yeah so yeah it doesn't take exactly a grim brothers scholar to figure out where the uh inspiration for her character was and uh her her weapon is like this this sort of like this rapier this uh small fencing um a sword which has like a pistol chamber embedded into it containing this other thing because there are lots of things in this world lots of lore stuff going on called dust mm. what the fuck is dust uh, i can't i don't know really how to explain dust apparently it's a natural mineral that somehow gives people superpowers yeah it basically has these rocks that have all sorts of different properties like some dust, if you combine with weapons, create ice attacks, others fire attacks or electrical attacks and stuff like that. It's, um, it's there. It's there. It's there. Uh, but it does, Extra lead, fun. it does lead to some pretty, really cool attacks. Like when she swings a sword and she creates ice out of places and all sorts of stuff. And she, she could do really well with that. And her sem- semblance is to create these like glyph things that people can bounce off of or can hurt enemies i never really quite understood them it, it, her main ability is to is to summon things yeah but that she did discover that later yeah yeah initially she could only do glyphs things and uh but things the thing is though even though she's stuck up and uh, quite prissy and a little mean sometimes it's a real testament to the show's writing, how good it is, because she never comes across as unlikable. Mm. Like, there are times we don't like what she says, or maybe even things she does, but we still like the character and want to be around the character. Yeah, because what everything, I think the, early on in Volume 1, when Weiss says certain things that, uh, that uh, there are characters, it's because it, she actually explains why she feels that way. She isn't just a, a, a bitch because she's a bitch. She's had a bit of a troubled childhood yeah and 
I it's because I've seen so many characters, so many characters where they make them like snarky or mean, and they you can tell that they're trying to get you to like them in some way, but the writing is so poor. You just you just hate the characters, and you don't mm. want to be around them. That's not the case with Weiss. She is a foil for other characters, not just it's some just not just someone that you you not an antagonist. Let me put it this way. And uh, a lot of interactions and with other characters are very interesting. And she does learn and grow and develop while still maintaining a lot of what her character is. So she doesn't become unrecognizable. It's not like, oh, I shouldn't be mean anymore. Now I'm nice, as we see far too often. Yeah, but Weiss's greatest uh, trait is because she's, she's very uh, uh, open about how what she thinks and says and that it does get negative connotations but the fact is she's a bit of she's a bit of a rebel i suppose in a way if, if once you look at her home life and learn what type of a background she comes from yeah i mean and the whole uh oh i'm really rich and really powerful but that means i had certain expectations and a stiff father who was like no you must do this <laughs> it, 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 it's been done before but uh no, that's about it. It's been done before. And I, I don't think it was really... Like, just once, just once, I'd like to see a really mean, snarky, rich person who actually had a great home life with loving, supportive, very nice, open and uh, parents who were not snarky. It means they had no excuse for their behavior. Just once, I would like to see that. Yeah. I suppose uh, if you go watch a te- some god-awful television program like uh, Super Sweet 16, you'll find something like that. Oh, No. No, no, thank no, you. No, 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 no. We watch good stuff. We watch like good stuff like this show. Yes. yes. And then we've got uh, the uh, black character, Blake, who Yay! is, as as her colour might suggest, kind of moody and withdrawn. Not quite emo, but still just kind of... Um, bookworm. Bit of a bookworm, bit a bit reserved. But uh, she's, I mean, she was the character that I gelled to the least in the first volume, just because, like, she so rarely says anything and yeah. is very reserved so she kind of fades away into the background and honestly out of all the characters i would say she is my least favorite but that doesn't mean i don't like her i think she's a very good character and as time went on i warmed up to her a lot more because we learn more about her because it turns out brace yourself for another lore dump she's a faunus mark what a faunus this is this is this is well, fauna sisters are basically fauna, 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 fauna. They're animal people. There you go. They're animal people. They're basically uh, humans, humanoid people with some small trait of an animal. So you've got some faunas with that look perfectly human but have rabbit ears or uh, deer antlers or a tail of some kind or horns or some other special ability that. Uh, coincides with an animal uh, of some sort and uh, sadly these people are subject to discrimination and prejudice and there are a lot of people speaking out against them and there's a lot of faunas that are speaking out right back and like with any uh, marginalized and discriminatorized group uh, pretty sure that's not a word but still uh, there are some people that push back in a very violent way and these are the white fang one of the Many antagonists, there are a lot of antagonists, uh, of this show who are basically like the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, but for animal people. And, and crazier. I don't know about crazy, because that's the thing, you see, that's the thing, you see. Their motives for doing what they do are very understandable. The Fauna's have been treated absolutely horribly in this world, and they're, they're kind of sick and tired of it, as we could, as perfectly understandable, which is not to say you agree with their actions. Their actions are fucking atrocious, but you never stop thinking like, well, I can't possibly see why they would do these things. They're not, they're not Cobra from G.I. Joe. Let me put it that yeah. way. Cobra! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Blake is, uh, the reason why she's, she's a fallen is because she's got little cat ears, little cute little cat ears that she comes up with a bow and it, it is adorable. And um, more of a, more of a cat-like qualities come into play in the series uh 
as quite, actually, it's, it's, it's quite clever when he realized that Blake's a fawn because um you know when when they all they all have to go into the forest to form the teams you, did you notice that Blake doesn't show up because he just landed on her feet yeah as it's uh little things like that I guess when you look back in hindsight you could realize they were very cat like but I didn't really see that a lot from my perspective. and honestly they hyped up the cat stuff uh much later on in the series, like for example, when a dog shows up and she really doesn't like it, <laughs> and uh, when uh, she, does, she does like tuna, she does she does like fish. She likes fish a lot, and um, yeah, what's what's a weapon? She's got like this weird like gun, rope, sword thing. I don't even know what you call it. Uh, according to Montium, it's a variant ballistic chain scythe. Yeah, it's a that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and a semblance is to create like these shadow clone duplicates. So like if someone goes to attack her, she'll create like a shadow clone duplicate and they'll hit the shadow clone duplicate while she runs away. And it, that's, uh, that's a pretty cool power, in all honesty. But it also ties into her character and her... So journey. very well. Yeah, it's almost like they thought about this show while they were writing it. Hmm... <gasps> Or even before they were writing it. It, it, like actual thought and time and effort went into carefully constructing this world. Isn't it wonderful? It is so fucking wonderful. And then we've got the uh, yellow character, Yang Zhao Long. Who is Yay! Ru who is Ruby's uh, half-sister, isn't it? Half-older sister. Half-older sister. And, uh, I, was, I mean, I love Ruby. I really, really do. Um... Yang is close to be my second favorite character, if not my first. Sometimes, depending on on what episode I'm watching, it varies between the two of them because she is just so badass. She's so much fun. She's so much fun. Her weapon is these like gauntlets that have like sh explosive shotgun shells inside of them. So when she punches someone, she punches them extra super hard. I could shoot like rocket propelled grenades out of them. And it's just, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, because the first, her first kick-ass scene, pretty much, as you said, it, it, it picturizes, it captures her character so well. Yeah, and, and it also her semblance ties into her character as well very much because uh, she, her semblance is, she's basically got Hulk powers. And yeah. so if someone really, really makes her angry, she gets 10 times stronger. And it gets even worse if you damage even a single solitary strand of her luscious golden hair. Don't touch the hair. Because then her eyes go red and she goes Super Saiyan on your ass! <laughs> yeah, cause, and, and it kind of comes to... Her hair kind of like catches on fire in a way. It's, I think it's her aura or something like that. Oh yeah, because there's another thing in the show called Aura, which is basically like your own personal bio force field. Hmm. Because we didn't need enough random shit in this. No, but anyway, it basically says, oh, how could someone survive at a blow like that? Well, they had their aura, but their aura is slightly diminished now, which is why they're really exhausted and tired. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. I need, a, I need a good aura so I can stop being tired. Yeah. And it's uh, and it just leads to some really, really cool stuff. Like, we've seen her, like, the thing she's done, like, she has, there's, um... I think it's now time to talk about the uh, the Grim. Basically, yeah. in this world, this is a space takes place on a planet called Remnant, and uh, in Remnant, uh, there are these creatures called the Grim. These are giant fucking monster demons from the pits of hell, and they uh, they look like bears and wolves and boars and dragons and shit and fucking giant elephants. But like <laughs> horrible mutated versions of them. And uh, they basically feed or are attracted to negative emotions. So if you're out in the woods and you are not having a very good time and you're, uh, you're feeling quite angry or sad, don't be because that's going to mean that a bunch of uh, bear wolves and shit are going to fucking come down and eat you. Because they're attracted to that shit and they are vicious. They are vicious creatures. You go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. Well, it's not just the woods, because it, it's so everywhere. cities and towns have been utterly uh, decimated by these creatures. Because if you're in a large, uh, uh, densely populated area, 
then that just means even more negative emotions for the Grim to uh, to attract the, attract the Grim. Which is why a lot of cities uh, have giant fucking walls. But also that's why the Huntsmen were first created. These are what mm. the... This is what the uh, main characters and a lot of other characters are training to be. They are training to be people that basically track down, study, and hunt the creatures of Grimm to make sure that they don't fucking kill everyone. Because this is like... It's like... Uh, the best example, the best comparison I could come up with is uh, the Titans from Attack on Titan. But mm, slightly, that's cool. slightly, or, or a bit, or... slightly scaled down a bit. Slightly scaled down. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to live with the Titans, but you can live with the Grimm as long as you have giant fucking walls and people that can fight them. Except... Yeah, I, yeah I, I always thought they were more like the uh, Hollows from Bleach because they're quite similar physically as big black scary monsters with white masks on. Yeah, that, that, that's a good a comparison. Although, uh, cause based on the little I know about Bleach, I've seen like two episodes and I didn't care for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when the giant, when the talking teddy bear came around, it was just like, don't care, <laughs> don't care anymore. But anyway, and um, this started like hundreds of years ago and uh it, it, it's keeping going since then and there are several different kingdoms there's uh beacon academy Let in haven uh atlas uh Myth shade Sh shade wait what shade Sh uh, actually no um veil beacon academy's in veil haven academy's in mistral atlas is in atlas and uh shade academy is in vacuo vacuo uh, these are all the different countries, and so they've got different academies uh, all over the world because it's a big coordinated effort uh, to, because, you know, if there are no huntsmen and huntresses uh, out there, then, um, well, uh, humanity's kind of fucked. Yeah, uh, it's a grim sized lifetime supply buffet. Yeah, it's. Uh... It, 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 it's 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 game over, man. It's game over. So a lot of people are on the line, but that doesn't mean people still can't have fun. Now, at, at each of these academy uh, starts off in Beacon Academy in the Kingdom of Vale. Uh, everyone gets assigned into teams, and the way they do that is they basically put people on these sort of like cannon pedestal things and shoot them into the fucking woods. And then they, yeah, they have to go for the woods, survive attacks from all these grim creatures, and uh, get these like chess pieces things, and then they get assigned into teams, and these teams will uh, study together, they'll learn together, presumably graduate together, and then later on uh, hunt and fight grim together, because, you know, taking down a grim by yourself is a great way to die. Yes. And so uh, Team Ruby is Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. Do you mm -hmm. get it now? Type it down uh -huh. onto your computer, R-W-B-Y, and it will make sense. It's difficult when I, I say it. Because when I say Ruby, yeah. people think I mean R-U-B-Y. But that's not what I mean. Yeah, I'm talking about the character in that case. This is confusing. <laughs> I suppose we should... Um... Because we should bring up the, the naming scheme of, of the show. Yes, because, uh, as you might guess, uh, the show is... Uh, the naming scheme uh, is very evocative of colours and other colour-related sort of symbology and imagery. So Ruby's colour is red, because Ruby, red. Uh, Weiss, white. Blake, uh, Blake Belladonna, black. black. And Yang Xiaolong, yellow... Yeah, I think her name translates to, like, a uh, little sun dragon, so it, ca it counts. Okay, yeah. And um, anyone who has created an original character, like a fan character based in this universe, has had a heck of a time trying to come up with a character that uh, has a name evocative of colours. Because it's, it's very, very, very hard. But also, the names, as I said, uh, coincide with the name of... Of the team they're in. And the name of the team, based on just four letters, with very few vowels, if any, have to uh, have a word as well. So there's the other... There's a secondary team, but with secondary characters that we still really like, but they're not the main characters. And that's Team Juniper. Featuring Yay! John, Anora... 
Pira. Pira and uh, Ren. Team Juniper. So let's talk about these characters. Let's talk about Jean. Jean is a male version of Joan of Arc. Yeah, because all the, all the, ga the gag is that all the characters in Team Juniper are gender benders of mythological figures who are gender bended. Oh, I, I, I didn't quite realise that. Oh, cross-dressing, cross, -dress cross -dressing, I suppose, is, is the, a better way of saying it. I wouldn't say cross-dressing, because then there would be the original genders, but in, like, oh, yeah. dresses and yeah. shit. Yeah, okay, never mind, never mind. Carry on. Yeah. Uh, the, the gender flipped cat based on uh, certain historical or mythological figures. So Jean is uh, Joan of Arc. His weapon is a sword and shield that he has, as well as a pretty nifty hoodie armor sort of thing. And he is my uh, behind uh, Ruby and Yang. He's my third favorite character, just because he's so adorable. He really yeah. is. He, he's, yeah. he tries so hard, but he's just not very good. And he thinks he's got game with the ladies, but he doesn't. <laughs> and uh, he's... Well, he's, uh... Well, oh, you say that, you say that. I, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, sorry, capers. Give it together, uh, give it together. Give, we'll get to that. We'll fucking breathe, get to that. Breathe, breathe. We'll get to that, we'll get there. <sighs> and uh, he's just a really fun character. He, there's, I don't think they handled his character particularly well in the first season because the character's very good, but a lot of the plot lines, like, there's an episode where, oh no, he's getting bullied and he has to stand up to the bullies. And it's every very special episode of a Saved by the Bell you've ever seen. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's fucking tedious, but uh, it does lead to a very interesting relationship between him and uh, Pira. Pira. I, for some reason, I keep on thinking Priyanka. Like Priyanka what? Chopra. I don't know. What. <laughs> Who's Priyanka? Like Priyanka Chopra, the actor. But I, that, I, that's a Pira. It's a shame because I really like the character Pira. I just keep forgetting her name because my brain doesn't work. But we'll get to her. And uh, he doesn't have a semblance to start off with. I uh, know. But we get, he gets that eventually. What's his semblance? Does his semblance turn it's, out to be? Well, he has the super aura, and he basically uses that to heal other people's auras. Handy. He's always basically elixir from X Men. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there's really not much more we say about the character. He's got a good friendship with Ruby, and uh, he, this is just a lot of fun characters. We're not going to spend too much time talking about these characters. And then there's uh, Nora, who behind <laughs> Jean is my fourth favorite character, although sometimes they switch too, just because she is a hyperactive bundle of absolute pink awesomeness and destruction <laughs> <laughs> i'm queen of the castle i'm queen of the castle and let's break his legs <laughs> yeah because this character she is always smiling always happy and always down to hit something she's got this giant hammer that transfers transforms into a grenade launcher i'm gonna say that again a giant hammer that transforms into a grenade launcher and she's got electrical powers, and she just, she just, and when she defeats a Grim, and she knocks it fucking unconscious, like this giant fucking bear creature, single-handedly, mind you, she's just like, oh, I broke it. Oh, it's broken. Words cannot describe Nora. Oh, and, my and, God. Yeah, Nora's based on four. Based and on she, Thor, because she's got electrical powers, as I said. Yeah, I like that she mentions that she got a semblance by being st struck by lightning on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, her, well, her full name is Nora Valkyrie, so that conjures up other things. And uh, she's just... Anything she feels, she feels to extreme. So when she feels really happy, she feels really happy. But when she gets a bit nervous about something, she's like hyper nervous. <laughs> and it's just like... She, she never stops talking and I love her. Yeah, I do love Nora. And then there's uh, Priya. Pira. Pira. Ah, uh, Pira. It's a hard name to say. <laughs> say, say it with me, Pira. 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 Pira Nikola Vukadija. I'm giving. I'm giving you Pira pressure. Pira pressure. Um, what's her last name again? Nikos. Pira Nikos. Oh, I I did I did know it was based on like Jason and the Argonauts. Was that right? Uh, no, she's based on Achilles. Oh, fine. Never mind then. Oh, God! That we should have known! We should have <laughs> known! I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm sorry. And uh, so she, her, um, basically what she's got, she's just got like this spear and shield thing that turns into a rifle. It's pretty cool. 
But she is like the golden child. She is like the best student at the school. She got like a sponsorship deal with like this breakfast cereal. And she, she's just like, she's super awesome. But she's like really, really nice and really genuine and supportive and kind. And she takes time to help Jean with uh, his semblance and his aura and his fighting skills. And she's like a mentor to him, but they've also got a really nice friendship. And uh, she's got this lovely laugh, like this really rich and melodic laugh that you don't hear mm. enough. And she just, she's just so nice. She's so nice. And, oh God. <laughs> there, there. You probably guess, Capers, what happens to her, but we're going to skip that. Yeah, she's going to she, she Ren. Talk to Ren, talk about Ren. Ren was played by uh, Monty Ohm, and he's, uh, what's he based on? Who's he based on? Uh, Mulan. Oh, okay then. Uh, his name is, uh, his full name is Lee Ren, and he's got, like, these, uh, twin, um, green bladed submachine guns <laughs> that, I mean, are cool on their own, I guess, but they don't really do much beyond that. And, um,. Uh, his semblance is the ability to hide himself and possibly others from Grimm. And... Yeah, because yeah, I assumed it was invisibility, but it turns out it's to mask negative emotion. Okay, right. So which is, it's fine, I guess. And But he's he's a pretty good fighter because he's got like the uh, traditional Chinese garb and he's got like the green stuff. And, and yet he's also got like these pink accoutrements, like pink lotus flower and stuff like that. And he's just like he's he's just a pretty cool character. He's he's very very reserved, even more reserved, I'd say, than Blake. And yeah, yeah. he doesn't really talk a lot, and um, occasionally has something kind of funny to say. But he's a very serious character. He's a very serious, stoic character, which is good because he balances out Team Juniper and Team Ruby to a greater extent, even more. Yeah, because uh, for what I understand is um, Monty didn't quite know what to do with Nora and Ren. And eventually, he just said to the um, to the to the writers, "Nora is a morning person, Ren is not," and they took it from there. Which is a great because they sort of grew up together and uh, they have been together for a long time. They're very good friends, and uh, and they they just they're like night and day. They're great great foils for each other, great convenient foils because he's a straight man. And she, do you know what they are? They are uh, she is Leslie Nope from Parks and Recreation, and he's. Uh, no, he's not Ron Swanson. He's uh, Anne from Parks and Recreation. I don't watch Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> fucking watch... No. The show's been off there for a long time, and I'm like, watch fucking Parks and Recreation. Watch Parks and Recreation. Just watch it, okay? Then you'll understand all those memes from the internet. <laughs> That's why I said... And there's lots of other teams. Uh, there's Team Sun, which is S S S N. S-N. We've, there's only two characters from that team that are relevant. We'll talk about them later, uh, if ever. And then there's Team uh, Cardinal, C R D L. Team uh, Who, Team Coffee. Yay. Coffee. Oh, Team Coffee. Oh, Team Coffee so cool. There's only two characters that are even slightly relevant from that, and even then, they're even less relevant than the other two characters I mentioned. So we don't need to know about them. We all love Velvet. We all love Velvet. Velvet's fawness. She's got the rabbit ears, and she she just she's sweet. She's so sweet. And then there's T. Uh, what's the coffee character? Um, Coco. Coco, who uh, has a purse that transformed into a minigun. I'm yeah. Say, I'm gonna say that again. A purse that trans. What more do you want from me, capers? Now, it's a person that turns into a minigun! Can your fucking clutch bag do that? I don't think so! Uh, yeah, that, uh, that sort of weapon would be, a, would be a godsend for any thieves. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was good... Oh no, he stole my purse! And Give now me he a has cash. a minigun! This is a very serious situation now. Give me a cash! <laughs> yeah, oh god. Take it from me! Oh god, and uh, it's... Uh... And those are some of the main characters. Uh, some of the side characters um, that are worth talking about. There are a few. Well, like the, the main, is, some of the main side characters that we need to know are. Well, Prof- Professor Ozpin and Crow, I suppose, aren't really any relevant ones. Uh, what about uh, what fucking Glinda? What's her name? Oh, she's not relevant. She's like she's. I don't. I don't. Glinda's alright, but she doesn't really have. She's like McGonagall. Yeah, her That's name it. is her name is Glinda Goodwitch, and she has like a riding crop, crop that can do magic. Yeah, and uh, That's about it. 
Yeah, that's about it. Uh, there's um, Peter Port, who's like a, oh, oh, oh. come on, kids, let's go and fucking shoot some things. Bully! The, so the major there. arms, the major arms of Ruby. <laughs> yeah, and he's got like a giant blunderbuss, and he's he's really funny. A lot of these side characters are really, really funny. Okay, okay, Doctor Ublek is is great fun as well. He drinks a lot of coffee. And yes, he, he's like a hummingbird on crack. He's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a, like a very scientific character. So he's, he reminds me a lot of like um, Professor Oak from Pokemon. If Professor Oak ah. actually got out into the world and actually studied Pokemon instead of just relying on prepubescent boys to do his job for my, him, it's my life's work. I caught the Pokedex. I go fill out the my life's work for me. <laughs> Just, by the way, hey, I know you're only ten, but by here, catalogue and study all the animals, ten year old boy. By the way, what's my grandson's name? I don't remember I don't know if he's a boy or a girl. His grand your grandson's name is a uh, poop face. No it's not, <laughs> it's Gary! Uh no, I think it is poop face. The little boy <laughs> said so. Go on, okay. poop face. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Oh god. Uh so this is something you don't even need to know this character. Professor Ozpin is clearly the Wizard of Oz, like, yeah. he's a, but he's a very, he's very, he, as you say, he's a very Dumbledore-esque character, he's very kind and wise and gentle, unlike the fucking film version of Dumbledore, who's a sadistic maniac. Ouch. <laughs> like, no, no, seriously, I, I, I like uh, Michael Gambon in the role, I like the character, but, like, in the book, we all know this, we all fucking remember this scene in the book. In the Goblet of Fire, he says, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? No, I didn't, sir, I promise. Okay, then. In the movie, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> oh, jeez, no, I didn't, I'm sorry. Right then, fucking what's going on here? Snape, give me fucking answers right now. I am pissed. I may got be exaggerating that. slightly. Yeah, I never got that. They're like, okay, a 14-year-old put his name in the cup. We don't know how he did it. What should, what should we do? The cup is the law. We must make him do it. Which is stupid. Well, it's magic, but even Just so... Just say no. I would say no. It's a magically binding contract. If your name appears from it, you have to do it but, or you fucking die. But what if it's not his handwriting? Does that count? I don't think the handwriting matters. If That's your stupid. name comes out of the Goblet of Fire, you've got to fucking do it because that means someone put your name in it. Yes, but you're supposed to put your own name We're in it. We're supposed to be talking about Ruby! I know! Oh, God. So, uh, Ozpin, a uh, very interesting character. And, you know, you know, again, it shows how much this show ha really thought about where it was going to go. Uh right at the start because the very first interaction with uh, between uh, Ruby and Professor Osbin uh, Ruby in the very first episode solved uh, well tried to apprehend this criminal what we'll talk about in a second and uh, because of that uh, Professor Osbin offers her a plate of cookies and a uh, position and the chance to study and train at his school despite the fact that she's a few years too young and uh, the, one of the first thing he says is you have silver eyes. Because all the characters have different colour eyes and she has silver eyes. Pay attention to that, because that's going to come into play, like, three seasons later. Yeah. <laughs> this is how much <laughs> effort they put into this show. Oh, my God. They're JK rolling it. Yeah, yeah. Unlike the movies that just played it by ear and didn't include the stuff that needed to be remembered later on because they were a bunch of hacks. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Focus on Ruby, not Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, and then we're talking about that criminal. That's Roman Torchwick, who's just a great fun uh, fun villain. Uh, he's the very it? first episode. And he's like got a bowler hat and a cane. And he's very suave and stylish. Yeah, he's, he's, um, he's based on Malcolm McDowell's character in A Clockwork Orange. I did get that sense. That, that's yeah. uh, Roman Torchwick. And he's, he's a cool character. And uh, again, spoiler alert, his death. Uh. Like, on the one hand, it's such a good character, sad to see him go, but what a fucking death, and the way they did that, oh my god, we won't go into too many details. But the other main character that you, other main villain, rather, I should say, that you need to know, is Cinder Fall. <laughs> Played by, uh, the cosplayer Jessica Nigiri, is that how you say her name? I, I think so. I don't know. Uh, and she's, she's enigmatic. Uh, she's a bitch. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, it's, <laughs> wow, okay. I think that's okay, the first time I've ever heard you say that word. Oh my God, we've known each other for like... Ten years, eight years, and you sh- I've never heard you say that word before. Oh my forgive, God. My, forgive my language, but I have to be blunt about it. Yeah, yeah. And my thoughts on my thoughts on Cinder are mixed at best. Yeah, because she does some horrible things. She is an, okay. So she's got this grand plan. She's that she's orchestrating the first two volumes, involving uh, the White Fang terrorist group and Roma Torchwick, and. Uh, the uh, the upcoming Vital Festival being held at Beacon and a bunch of Grimm and Beacon Academy and uh, as well as these two other characters, two of side characters, Emerald and Mercury, who are... Oh, wow. And Lo- Love Emerald, hate Mercury. Well, I would say you don't love Emerald because she's a bad person. No, but I, I think she's... She's all right as a character. I think she's all right. Yeah, but you don't think Mercury's as good as a character? I think he's an asshole, but there, there you go. Well, yeah, he's an asshole. I think he's an asshole com- too, but I don't dislike the character. I'm complicated. Oh, you've, you... Capers, this show brings out a lot of confusing feelings in people. It really yes. Does, and that's okay. Preach it. Yeah, and uh, I don't want to go into too much spoilers about the uh, later seasons, because I want, as much as we uh. are doing spoilers, I want the Capers to go and see this uh show for themselves they say uh there's a couple of filler episodes there's a couple of uh side characters we meet like uh neptune and sun who's another foreigner who's based on sun wukon from uh judge the west and i just i can talk about the side characters all fucking day but <gasps> penny penny oh god penny I... we like penny we I'm like combat Penny. ready. Oh, Penny, we'll we'll talk about Penny. We yeah, you know, we won't not gonna talk about Penny. We're not gonna talk about Penny. Uh, uh. All you need to know is there's a greater force pulling the strings of Cinderfall. Many different villains, yeah. <laughs> lots of different plans, lots of different places for these characters to go, and oh, it's it's fucking fucking awesome. And I really think that's all the backstory for this show and these characters that you really need. Can you think of any other important plot points, early plot points, or characters that you need to know about? We um, talked about Adam Taurus before. Adam Taurus is uh, the antagonist. Crow and Raven, I suppose, are important, and Ruby's mom. Uh, Ruby's mom. Uh, Ruby's mom. Summer Rose. Ruby, Ruby's mom. Uh, poss- but... Possibly. They never actually confirmed it. She has a, a grave. Great... Yeah, but Yang said that Ruby's mom. Went on a mission and didn't come back, so she might not be a hundred percent confirmed dead. They put oh a grave. shit! Now I've got oh god, because it, but the, the 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 rose slash uh, Shao Longs have a uh, bit of a thing. Uh, basically, uh, their Ruby and Yang's dad, uh, Tai, is it Tai? Tai Yang. Tai Yang. Uh, has a he he uh, was initially involved with this his teammate. Uh, romantically speaking, uh, 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 Raven Branwen, is that her name? Uh, Bronwen, I think, or Branwen, Bronwen, Bronwen, I think. And uh, she, um, she kind of fucked off shortly after uh, Yang was born. Uh, she, we see her later on. She's an interesting character. <clears throat> God, my throat! I shouldn't have shouted so much. Uh, and he, and to console himself, uh, Ty ended up going out with. Uh, Ruby's mother, Summer Rose, who supposedly died. Supposedly. So, and so, single dad, raising the two kids plus a corgi. It's why. It's why! Can you guess what that's a reference to, kids? It's so obviously Cowboy Bebop! Yay. Correct! Da, 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 da. I, I love Cowboy Bebop, so who cares? Why is awesome? He's so cute. And so they've got a complicated back, but they're a very loving family. And we see more of a Tally later and lots of other things. Uh, they this show there's so many different seeds of characters and half mentioned mm. stuff planted that come into play much, much later. And it's it, that's what's so cool about it. And you know what? It shows because this show fucking exploded. It's now an international phenomenon. Yeah, it's even got an official Japanese dub, which is even greater. Official Japanese dub. Ju- Official Japanese dub. You can find it on Netflix. Uh, it, 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 it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's a huge thing. So much so that it's got a, a little spin-off show 
Ruby Chibi. Uh, I, I thought it was alright. I watched like the first season. I watched it. I've seen a couple of episodes. It's not really my thing, but it's funny and it's kind of cute and it, it's chibi. It's one of those traditional anime chibi things where it's just like all the characters we know uh, having fun where nothing bad happens. Nothing bad happens. <laughs> oh god. Uh, <laughs> I know this we, show. I, this show is very emotional, capers. It you will. It goes the Joss Whedon route of making you love these characters and then doing horrible, horrible things to them. It rips your heart out. It rips your heart out. Some of the other things. Uh, it's had a manga adaptation, and it's uh, what else? Ooh, also, also, it's even progressed into the world of video games. Oh, yes. Um, who's it crossed over with? I can't remember. It's Okay, there's an upcoming fighting game called, a part of a series of fighting games called Blaze Blue Cross Tank ah. Battle. Ah, yeah. Which features uh, crossover characters from things called Blaze Blue, uh, Persona 4, something called mm. Under Night in Birth, and Ruby. Uh, so, uh, Ruby and Weiss are going to be in there, as well as uh, Blake and Yang as free downloadable content. So, that's a thing that's happening. Uh, but also, there's another game that I played called Ruby Grim Eclipse. Which, oh, yes. I, I haven't played that. Which is available on, uh, I think it's uh, PC, uh, possibly Xbox, but I played it on a PlayStation 4. And it, it's a co-op game. It's best played with co-op, but you can play it single player. And it's it's so much fun. Like, mm. you, you watch this show, you watch this show, and you see these characters fight. I think, oh man, I wish I could do all those things. In Ruby Glib Rib Eclipse, you can. Hmm. It's, I can't understand how much fun it is. And uh, you can play as all the members of Team Ruby and all the members of Team uh, Juniper, depending on what DLC you've got. And oh, yeah, it's available for Xbox One, uh, PlayStation 4, it's available on Steam. And you basically just go through uh, the levels and you fight uh, Grimm. And you, uh, it's 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 an original story. It's not based on any of the events that happen in the uh, in the show. Although presumably it takes place concurrent to that or separate to that. I don't know. Uh, there's even original characters. There's an antagonist, Doctor Moreau. Uh, I think he's based on Doctor Morale. Moreau, you mean? Uh, yes. Well, sorry, Doctor Moreau. Yeah, and uh, it's. Uh, well, it's it, it's just it's a lot of fun. It's 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 weird. It's weird to talk about you can't talk about it on the podcast, but just, just a minute, I'm just going to say it. If you can get it and you like this show, get it. I don't really know what your excuse is, Mark. <laughs> uh, my PC doesn't work. It's too old to play video games on. Get a PlayStation Four. I have got I, I have got a PlayStation Four. Well, then get it on PlayStation Four then. We shall see. We shall see. You're going to get it. That is your homework. Buy a game. Hmm. We'll see about that. What more evidence do you need? Because I'm, I don't know, because I'm waiting for Volume 6 to come out. I'm Sorry? a patient person. I, I'm waiting for Volume 6 to come out, and I'm patient. You're waiting for Volume 6 of the web series to come out? Yep. So then you're going to wait till that happens to get the game that takes place before Volume 6 and has nothing to do with Volume 6. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see whether or not I get it or not. Stop pressuring me! Never! <laughs> no. Uh, <go> <laughs> and also, this is something I want to talk about. Uh, do you watch the that um that series uh, by Screw Attack called Death Battle? Uh, I've seen a couple of episodes. They've had Ruby characters on there, haven't they? There, there's only been one, one character on there. Uh, Yang, Yang, wasn't it? It was Yang, yes. Uh, Death Battle, for the capers don't know, is a YouTube uh, series, a recurring YouTube series, where it takes your favourite fictional characters, from superheroes to all sorts, and pits them against similar characters to see who would actually win. So they've got things like a uh, Hawkeye versus Green Arrow, Quicksilver versus The Flash, uh, Black Panther versus Batman... Uh, Android 18 versus uh, Ms. Marvel or Captain Marvel, uh, Wonder Woman versus Thor, and one of the big ones, the big one that's so big that they actually had to do it twice, uh, Superman versus Goku. 
Ouch. Yeah, and uh, one, one that I really, really liked was Yang versus Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII. Ah, that's a hard, oh, that, oh, that's a hard one. Oh. Now, you haven't seen that, Mark, have you? Actually, I think I might have. I just can't remember who won. Uh, do you want me to tell you who won? I'm guessing Yang did. You are correct, because oh. Yang... Diva Lockhart, basically, as far as I'm aware, is a character that's supposed to be, like, really strong and really yeah, great at is. punching and fighting. She is. Yang fucking destroyed her. Ouch. It was... I mean, it's a fair fight. It's always a fair fight on Death Battle. And, but uh, Yang won pretty decisively. And the great thing about Death Battle is they use science to, to uh, based... And, it, yeah, it's based on all oh, things that are science fiction. But they do their best to make sure that everything that it's not just like fans saying no nah, superman would win because of this oh, no goku would win because of this they use actual uh fair legitimate research to best determine who would probably win and uh, even though i've seen characters that i really like and that i wanted to win lose and get horribly murdered by these other characters their explanation has always been very very good and there's always some people that point things out or uh disagree but you always understand the reasoning behind what they the results of each death battle and so i'm pretty sucking satisfied with yang beating tifa lockhart oh i i, I do agree i think yeah comparing tifa and yang tifa is just very good at fighting yang has well yang is yang yeah yang is fucking yang uh now talking about the uh, we talked about the manga have you read the manga uh, I admit I have not, but I know they're. I think don't they have like expansions on certain stories and things. Uh, I don't know because I've read like a few pages of the manga. The problem is I don't really read manga, and I'm not very adept at reading manga. And so for the manga uninitiated, it's probably not that uh, fun to read. But, but yeah, I, I really ought to start reading manga. I've often considered it, but it's not that hard reading reading from the opposite opposite direction it's not that difficult at all you say that but i'm used to reading from left to right why don't they it, just when they print them switch them around i don't know like i can understand for a japanese audience for an eastern audience like keeping that as is but for, like when you publish it in the west like you've got to take out the japanese language and put in english or french or whatever language you're putting in so why don't i just flip the pages round like really 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 I don't think it's going to take away too much, but that's just me. It's fine. I'm sure there's probably a very good reason for that, but I don't know. Probably. But, uh, but I mean, it's, it's there, and it's pretty good. And it's... Uh, have you heard of the manga Dogs? No. The guy who did that, uh, Shiro Miwa, I'm saying that right, uh, illustrated uh, the uh, manga adaptation of the, the, the Ruby manga. My voice, swear to God. I haven't shouted in a long time on this show. I've been we talking about too many things that are good. Uh. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, and so, there's a... And, but all of this, all of this pales in comparison to the fan response. Uh, we talked about original characters before. A lot of people do a lot of original characters. I'll be honest, Capers, I'm going to reveal some to you now. Both Mark and I have tried to make original characters for this thing. Just for our own little... We had a spare hour and we just... We just Dotted down some ideas for original fan characters. Rooster Teeth, if you're listening, we have ideas. We'd be happy to share them. Yeah, I think... How many have I made? Um, I think I've got about f- three teams at the moment. Three teams? Uh, I'm going to have to look, up, look them up now. Hold on one second. I've got... Actually, I, decided, I took the liberty of listing your characters as well. Oh, really? Okay. Wait, What? I listed your characters just in case I c- couldn't use any of the team names. You stole my characters? No, I wrote them down so I had so I knew which things I couldn't use okay. because you had already done them. Okay, so you've got three teams. Uh, yeah, I've got three teams at the moment. I got one. Two. Okay, I've got seven. You well done. Yeah, I've got no, two. I, more. I, I made seventy. And bear in mind, capers, each team has four characters in it. So, uh, what's four times seven? Seven times four. Uh, 28. Uh, 20, yeah. Oh, I've got 28 characters and you've got... Uh, 12. 12. <laughs> okay, so maths isn't my strong suit. What of it? Oh, dear. 
Yeah, yeah, we're not going to go to talk about all the characters and stuff like that that we made because they have no real relevance and bearing on the show itself because they're completely original characters that we just made up. But it's it was fun. Ha- it's fun to make up these characters. And it was hard to do it. It is fucking hard. But I had to go on Wikipedia and look up like all the synonyms of different shades of different hues of different colors it was exhausting. I, I i cheated a little bit i looked up names that mean colors so i used some of those well that's fair enough yeah no uh, yeah you, you're allowed you're allowed to do that what are some of the names of your teams uh see so, you now uh team sapphire team luna and uh team vorpal because my that team's alice themed oh very nice i've got team ebony team ivory uh, team Opal, Team Pastel, like pastel colours. Uh, yeah. Team Quartz, Team Sorbet, and Team Willow. Uh huh. That's good. Good. Li- very good lineup. Yeah, I think that's a good lineup. Again, Rooster Teeth. Car- I have yeah. ideas. I've designed a lot of characters. I got this thing where I designed them. So you know, if you're in the mood for more characters, not very. Really. Car- I don't think they really need me though. I think they've been pretty good at creating all these original characters by themselves. Yeah, you have a character called Nutmeg, I like that. Nutmeg, yeah. <laughs> and uh, something else I really want to talk about is uh, the music. Because the music plays very heavily in it, because it's done by the same people. It's, uh, it's Jeff, Jeff Williams w- and Casey Lee Williams. Yeah, they're great. So they have some great music. This will be the day uh, as the theme for Volume 1, then Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4. It's uh, Time to Say Goodbye, When It Falls, Let's Just Live... And the triumph. So, this will be the day is my favourite. Uh, time to say goodbye is my second favourite. Let's just live is my third favourite. Uh, the triumph is my fourth favourite. And when it falls is my least favourite. Uh, me, uh, probably uh, two, one, uh, four perhaps. And five and three kind of bounce around. Yeah, because they're all very good themes. They're all sung really, really well. There's lots of other songs in the show that are really cool, like uh, Caffeine or Red Light Roses. Uh, boop. Boop. Yeah, yeah, this, this Boop. <gasps> There's a song, Capers, called Boop. And it's Boop, Boop, Boop. Boop, Boop, Boop. boop, 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 boop. Uh, we can't do them justice on this show, and we can't play yeah, them. Yeah, no, just go listen to the soundtracks on YouTube. Yeah, it's a fucking great soundtrack. There's, if, uh, there's great songs for all different things, whatever mood you're in, whatever thing. You want to get hyped, you want to get pumped, you want to feel something nice and soft and melodic, you want something to dance to, you got that, and there's even dancing in the show. Yeah, apparently, apparently the Volume 1 soundtrack beat out the uh, Hunger Games Catching Fire soundtrack on iTunes. Ho <laughs> ho I am not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, take what, that, Katniss. What, take that, Katniss. I mean, what are songs are even on the Hunger Games Volume One? Uh, like, like, I don't like know, that, don't care. That, that's that one song that's like, da, nah, I don't know. Da, the, nah. I don't know the uh, theme songs. All right, I suppose that's the only one I remember. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it it's fucking awesome. I listen to them on a regular basis, and it's just one of the many things that, about the show that's so so cool and that's because a lot of the people that work on the show are really cool you've got the traditional uh a lot of people that worked on red vs blue and other people that worked at rooster teeth for a long while bernie burns is an executive producer mm-hmm. and uh, of course obviously uh it was created and the big guy the joss whedon of the show was monty ohm and uh, which makes it a little sadder that he sadly passed away, if you weren't aware. Yeah. It was, yes. It, uh, I didn't get into the show until after his tragic passing, but I was very disappointed to hear about it. And uh, it's one of those things where the future of the show was up in the air a lot. People didn't want, wondered, is this that show actually going to continue? Because he was created a lot of the lore and a lot of the characters, and it wasn't the only one, but it was... It was People were concerned that it wasn't going to continue as much as they were sad about his passing. Thankfully, it did continue. It did, from season three onwards, I uh, was um, sadly sans uh, Monty Ohm. And uh, the show feels the same. More or less. More or less, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's now, it was directed by Monty Ohm. Now it's directed by uh, Kerry Shawcross uh, from volume three onwards. And... Uh, the show is not the same as it was in Volume 1, but that's because shows develop and change. No show is the same as it is 
in season four as it is in season one, no matter what you're doing. And if it is, then it's probably not a very good show. So it develops and it's it's uh, it's grown and it's just gone from strength to strength, in my opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, yeah, I agree. I mean, the animation's changed. They, they've used some sort of they're using a different um, animation program to do it, but it's and the, the it's still based. The animation has improved by leaps and bounds. Season one is good. Uh, but then it's go- it, it's I, I, a little I, I, a little glitchy, a little glitchy here and there. But you know what? It was when did this first come out. It was um, it first came out in uh, 2013. So how far we come? How far we come? And uh, so the animation was very good, especially for a web series at the beginning. And it's just gotten stronger and stronger. The voice acting has gotten stronger and stronger. And it started out pretty fucking goddamn strong. Uh, some of the main uh, the main, main four characters voiced by Lindsay Jones, Cara Eberle? Eberle? Eberle, I'm guessing. Uh, uh, Aaron Zek. I don't know how you say her name either. Sorry. And Barbara, Sorry. Dun- and Barbara Dunkerman, who's worked in uh, uh, Rooster Teeth quite a bit as well. And done lots of other things for them. So, uh, for very strong voice actors, they're really, really good at what they do. And all the voice actors are really strong and good at what they do, if I'm honest. Yes. Yeah, they've, I like they've actually they've got like some more well-known actors along the way as well. They've got a few familiar faces, or, or voices, I suppose is a better term. Um, they've got, uh, uh, I, 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 I hate pronouncing his name, um, the guy who voices Edward Elric and former Alchemist. Um, Vic Mignonga. Mignonga. Minonga, damn it! No, I'm doing it. Yeah, you can't. He, he, you, can't pro- you, you can't pronounce Pira. I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, well, he voices a uh, crow, Branwen, who we, we forgot to mention is a uh, kickass. He's kickass, and he's so kickass because he's drunk all the time. But yeah, he, but he's also uh, he's Ruby and Yang's uncle. Uh, well, uh, Ruby's half uncle because he's the brother brother of uh, Raven. That's the whole thing. He turns up in season three in the best way possible. Dig God. Fight, fighting, fighting Weiss's old sister Winter, who's uh, voiced by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn of Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, these are proper people that they got in here. Uh, well, they're all proper people. Uh, uh, Ren was voiced by Monty Ohm, but is now voiced by is his brother Neef. Uh, yeah, Neef, I think his name is. Which is a great tribute to him, and I'm really glad they got him to do that. And uh, you're just just as good as Joel was Monty, mm. and so I'm really glad to see that. Uh, we mentioned Jessica Nagiri, voices in the fall. Uh, some other ones. Uh, Miles Luna has frequently done work on uh, Rooster Teeth. He uh, voices Jean Arc. Uh, mentioned Shannon. Mc- uh, no, no, Shannon McCormick does um, Ozpin. He's very good. Uh, Gray Haddock, Roman Torchwick, and. Uh, Oh yes, uh, so the director is Cherry Kerry Shawcross. He does a uh, Neptune, Neptune Vasilius. Yes, that's right. Uh, also, they got um, Mercury was voiced by J.J. Castillo in uh, Volume Two, but season three onwards, he's voiced by uh, Yuri Lowenthal, who's done so Sas- many different things. With- Sa- Sasuke. Sasuke. He's not Sasuke. So I can tell you feel very strongly about that. I, I am an I am I am a Naruto fan. Wait till we get do an episode of Naruto. A few things to say on that. Oh god, Naruto! I I I stuck with Naruto for so long. It's so it's it was good, but it was so exhausting. There's too many. All the Shonen Jump uh, shows just have way too many episodes for me. Too many. I stuck all the way through Naruto, and I stuck all the way through Bleach. <laughs> you you you're a stronger man than I am. And Naruto is still going actually, but now it's the. 20 years later, sequel of Boruto, and I can't really be bothered to watch that. That was Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, whatever, which... Or, or as our friend James called it, uh, Naruto Shit Pudding. <laughs> oh, you hit away with words, did James? Um, <laughs> Bernie Burns does a uh, Tai Yang. Uh, I forgot his name, it's, it's not Tai, it's uh, Tai Yang Jialong. Um, there's, lo- well, there's, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of... Uh, Characters. People, characters, lots of, lots of different voice actors, and they're all great. They're all fucking great. Oh, God. And there's so many... How do you just explain? There's so many jokes and so many things like... Okay, do you want to know... If you want to know, you really want to know why you should watch this show, Capers. I'm going to tell you right now. 
beginning of volume two, the, ah. the majority of the first episode, I believe, uh, it was was the first episode. Yeah, it was the first. Yes, episode. it was. It was. Was uh set aside, was focused on a massive food fight, but it's a food fight. More like a food war. Like they use <laughs> breadstick, like a baguette, <laughs> as swords and launch watermelons, and it's it it I I. It's 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 fucking intense. It's fucking. It, it's like if a Quentin Tarantino directed a food fight. Now that would be awesome. Or better yet, no, John Woo. John Woo directed a food fight. Okay, okay, that'd be even more awesome. Yeah, it's. It, the visuals alone don't even do it justice. Capers, go and watch this web series. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Netflix. You can find it on our Rooster Teeth website. And there's really no excuse. It has the Scott James Merridew pod caper seal of approval. And you know I so rarely give those out. It's, it's so good. It's so good. Both Mark and I like it. We don't like it. We love it. We love it so much. We love it so yes. much. We created a original character about it. I mean, I, I'm not a fan fiction person, but if I was going to write fan fiction, it might be very well about this. Yeah. Oh, God. And uh, is there anything else we can really say about it? Uh, not about jumping into deep, deep, deep spoilers, which we, we shall not do. Yeah, we, we may have hinted at some things, Capers, but you'll just have to watch the show to find out out and i think on that note we're gonna end the show thank you very much mark for joining us today always a pleasure and if you enjoy the show capers please tell your friends shout from the rooftops and if you haven't already go back and listen to some of our other super episodes uh like the episode we did with uh kit putty geeks horsley who we talked about how much we both loved buffy the vampire slayer it's very similar to what we hey. did today hey um, yeah, and you can listen to the show on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, or at podcapers.com. We've got a Patreon. Check out the rewards, patreon.com forward slash ap2hyc. If you want to get in touch with us, suggest show topics that maybe you want to come to the show yourself, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at ap2hyc, or email us at podcapers at ap2hyc.com. Thank you very much to Dan Harris for our logo, the lively microphone, the red and blue 3D glasses, and thank you for listening. This has been Podcapers, the official podcast for a place to hang your cape. And now I'm going to have some tea with fucking honey and lemon in it because my throat is sore. Kill the music!